and my roommate is part of this totally different religion that's it's actually pretty interesting to me. And then there's my boyfriend who just kind of picks and chooses from different religions. You know, I, I always thought I knew what I believed about God. Now I'm just not sure. Well, the good news is it doesn't really matter what you believe, as long as you're sincere. I shouldn't even have to tell you this, but God never said that. I do believe that sincerely, look like it hurt. You got one on your hair. That's hilarious. All right, he's a little mean, but hey, that's okay. He's an angel, can get away with that. <laughs> We, we got these, uh, these wonderful vignette series that kind of uh, tackle some of the areas that our society would deem to be what God has said and has not. A lot of times we believe things that are not necessarily true. And how a person believes determines the course of their life. So it's important that we believe the right things. And uh, one of the most popular ones, you can go back and look at the rest of the series we've had. This is our final installment of this, God Never Said That. And today, perhaps, is one of the most famous ones that people often talk about is this. It does not matter what you believe as long as you are sincere. Basically, it doesn't make a difference what religion you believe in, whether it's Islam, Hinduism, uh, Buddhism, Confucianism, whatever it is, or Mayism, whatever it is, it doesn't make a difference as long as you're sincere. After all, all roads lead to heaven. God's a loving God, and we believe in God, when we are of the world, we are his children, you know, we sing, we, we sway together to the music. I'm, I'm dating myself, but we believe that everyone ends up going to heaven. Anyhow, it doesn't make a difference what you believe. It's just the path that you're most comfortable with. It's like, you know, I like ice cream, and you might like uh, Rocky Road. I might like vanilla. You might like chocolate. It doesn't really make a difference. It's all the same thing. And so a lot of people believe that. So my way is Christianity, but your way is something else. And whatever you think... It really doesn't matter as long as you're sincere. Now, this is a, something we're hearing about all the time in our culture today. Now, it's happening for several different reasons. One of the reasons is, is that we live more in a pluralistic society than we ever had before. In the past, the United States of America was primarily uh, Christian and Jewish, and maybe some atheists, but that is primarily. But now, because of the influx of transportation and the Internet, we have uh, many different faiths that are now coming to the United States, which is great. We love all people. And there's some Buddhists coming, Islam is coming, and all the different religions. And so how do we know, number one, that is there only one way? And if there is only one way, then it sounds kind of judgmental. And we've evolved as a culture. We believe that there's many ways. I'm, I'm just quoting what people believe. I'm not saying that, okay? I, I, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he's the way, the truth, and the life. But I'm going to be sharing with you about that and how do we deal with that. And if you're in the process right now of trying to figure it out, let me just give you permission to figure it out. Because I went through a period of time in my life when I went to seminary, I began to doubt everything about Christianity, and I wasn't quite sure I believed it anymore. And I went through the wrestling process for over a year, looking at different world religions and saying, God, are you really real? Is this just a myth? Is this, how do I know Islam is not right? How do I know that um, Buddhism is not correct? How do I know that the God of Christianity, that Jesus is the way? How am I supposed to know that? So I went through that process. And God is not afraid of questioning. Now, let me just say something real quickly. There are two types of people that ask questions. One type of person asks questions because they really, really want to know. And God will honor you if you're asking questions because you really want to know. Then there's others that ask questions, not because they want to know. They're trying to find a loophole and discredit God so they can be their own God. Now, a lot of people do that. I've done it in the past. And I'll keep God just at a distance so I don't know what he's saying. I remember growing up, my mom was here, and, and, and she wanted me to do certain things in the house, like clean the garage or whatever. And I said, uh-huh, yeah, my, hi, Mom, how you doing? Good to see you, good to see you. And I would just acknowledge her and give her a quick wave, but she, I didn't want to hear, well, didn't I tell you? I didn't hear you, Mom. So I used that excuse, and then Dad would come home and beat me to the pulp. No, I'm just kidding. That didn't happen. <laughs> that did not happen. They were really good. They were great parents. But we stay just far enough away so we can use ignorance as an excuse. But the truth is, there is a way. And we're going to talk about it today. And it's very interesting as well. People often say that. You know, it sounds good. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. It just sounds good. It feels, it's good, it's good feeling theology. It feels good to say that. 
I don't want to offend you. You don't want to offend me. And after all, we're all the same. It doesn't make a difference and all that. And our, and our culture does that. And our, our culture loves to talk about God. Have you noticed that? I mean, everyone, you the Academy Awards, I just want to thank God. Meanwhile, beat my wife and it killed my two, the second, you know, they do these terrible things. And, and they're on drugs and this and the other and they're cheating and this. And, I just want to thank God for everything. Like, what's going on here? I, I'm a, I believe in God and everyone believes in God. In fact, you can go anywhere you want to and pretty much say that, except for the atheists get a little upset about that. But most people are okay with you saying, I believe in God. There's even certain talk show hosts that have their own um, channel on television that talk about God. They'll have, they'll have a Buddhist come in there. They'll have a Christian pastor come in. They'll have all kinds of folks. Hey, it doesn't make a difference what you believe as long as you're sincere. It's God. We've evolved as a culture. We're not so animistic anymore, worshiping. We don't just believe there's one God. We believe there's many paths. God's big. He's so big we can't confine him. And you're narrow-minded if you think that Christianity is the only way. Now, what separates and gets people agitated with us is the moment you say, I believe in Jesus is the Son of God. Well, Jesus is a way. But the problem is, Jesus never said, I'm a way. He said, I am the way, not a way. Big difference. And so how do we know that today? And um, a lot of people say, you know, Jesus is a good guy. We, I mean, everyone, you ask anyone, they say, yeah, Jesus really existed. We believe he really existed. But we believe he's a mythological figure. We believe he's like Paul Bunyan or Johnny Appleseed. We think people that were with Jesus, they kind of made up a story and it perpetuated through time. And by the way, if you want to hear more about this type of reasoning, you can go to cornerstonecheshire.com and look under the sermon called Can We Trust the Bible? I deal with some of these issues, so I'm not going to repeat myself with that. But what I will say is this. People would say he is a great moral teacher. He's a good guy. We like his teaching. I mean, how can you not like what Jesus teaches? Forgive those, help the poor, right? Be nice to those that are bad to you. I mean, you can't, you, can't, you can't argue with that. Yeah, Jesus is a great moral teacher. We like Jesus. We think he's fantastic, but he's not the only way. He was an enlightened prophet, as Islam would say. He's an enlightened prophet, but he's not the son of God. There's only one God, and that's it's polytheism, and this and the other. And so that's what Islam would say. And so all kinds of different world religions would say that. But, I don't know if you realize this, Jesus said something really exclusive, uh, which might get him in trouble today. Uh, Thomas was asking him, Lord, where are you going? And, and if you put it on the screen, I'd appreciate it. Uh, John chapter 14, verse uh, 5. Thomas, one of his disciples, and you know, you've heard of Thomas, right? What's his first name? <laughs> what a bummer. Can you imagine going to heaven? Hey, doubting Thomas. Oh, man, I'll never let that down. But, you know, uh, he was called Doubting because he doubted Jesus, but that's not his name. His name is Thomas, not Doubting Thomas. That's not very nice of you. How would you like if we, okay, let's just stop right now. All right, so Thomas said to him in verse 5, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am. I'm going to stop right there. He says, I am. You know what I mean? If he says, I am, it's the same, uh, same basic words used when Moses was on Mount Sinai, and Moses is like, God, who should I say sent me? He says, tell him the great I am, which means I am God. So Jesus is not just saying, I'm a moral teacher. He's saying, I am. He's saying, I'm God. Now, some of you married people like that that think they're God. No, Jesus really thought and said he was God. He says, I am the way. He says, I don't show a way. I'm not going to point you to the way. I am the God of the way. He says, I am the God of the truth. I don't give you truth. I am the truth. I don't point to the truth. I am the truth. Uh, and then he says, I am the life. All I am statements. This is what got Jesus in trouble. It, it, believe me, Jesus walked around like some of those relics we see on some of those medieval paintings of an anorexic man walking around going, peace be with you, and peace be with you, I love you. He would never be put on the cross. The reason he was put on the cross is because what he said was radical. He basically dismantled the religious system of his day by saying, I am the Messiah, I am God. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Now here, it gets real exclusive here. He says this. No one, that means no one, no one comes to the Father except through me. He says, I am God, I'm part of God, and no one comes to God except through me. I am the door, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Now, the moment you say that, people will get upset with you. You're saying, that's, you know, that's not very inclusive. That's hateful to say that you have the only way. How can you say that? 
Well, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Imagine, if you will, that I went to the Chevy dealership, uh, Blase, whatever it's called, in Waterbury, and let's suppose for a moment I decided to go to Toys R Us, and I decided to buy about eight or nine Monopoly boxes. And I collected all the money, and I put it in a suitcase, and I went down to the Chevy dealership, and I walked up, and I picked up a red Corvette Z06 2015, 243 horsepower and 600 pounds of torque, and I said, I'm going to buy this car with monopoly money, because to me, this is real money. All that currency that says, in God we trust that, we don't believe in that. We believe monopoly is the way to go. After all, look at Donald Trump. Anyhow, so, <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyhow, I'm going to get political. I'm having fun. So I go down there, and I start saying, I want to buy the car. And I start laying aside $1,000 bills, and I get up all the way to $85, $95, dollars to buy the Z06. And I go, okay, give me the car. And the guy's like, what, are you kidding me? I'm not going to get it. What do you mean you're not going to give it to me? That's not money. Who says it's not money? You're being hateful. How can you say that's not money? I think it's money. And if it's, if it's true to me, it's true to me. You need to honor that. I mean, how ridiculous would that be? That'd be ridiculous, right? For me to go down and demand something like that, but there's people that make up their own God. Well, this is truth and this is not truth. There is truth, and I can be sincere by going down there and thinking, hey, this monopoly money is going to be able to buy a car or buy a house. And I can climb up on a ladder and go to the top of this building and decide, you know what, I believe, I sincerely believe I can fly. So I'm going to, believe it or not, look, at, I'm, I'm flowing through the air. I'm going to jump off the, believe it or not, I'm walking on air. I'm, I'm not beginning to show the 80s uh, sitcom. So I jump off the top of this church, and I'm like, I'm flying. And that's the end of me. So I, was I sincere? Yes. Was I right? No. There, my friends, there is truth and there's false. And so when someone says that Jesus is the only way, only truth, only life, that means, does it mean uh, that Christianity is the only way? And this is the problem. Not every, ever watch a program on television that said the views expressed by this person meant necessarily ours? Well, a lot of people say they're Christians, but the way they live their life does not say at all that they're his. And so, so many times people, I've known Christians that are people that I want nothing to do with. They're judgmental, they're angry, they, they seem to enjoy hell and help everyone goes there. You think they, grew, they think they grew up in hell, they know it so well. You know, they're going to hell. You know, everything's hell, hell, damnation. And you're like, man, I don't want that kind of person. They're, they're self-righteous. And then you meet other people that are just wonderful. They love God. They really care about people. And they really care about you. Okay? Don't judge all of Christianity based upon a person. Because different people, there's, there's false ones, there's real ones, there's ones that are weak, ones that are strong. But how do we know that Jesus is the only way? Well, just to look at different religions. Not all religions are the same, by the way. And they're, they're very different from each other. Now, let me say something. Uh, just a little premise is this. And even some scientific research and anthropology is suggesting some of what I'm ready to say. But we know it's true from the Bible. What happened was God made a perfect, perfect race of people. But we chose to go our own way. All right? So perfection. Our genetic code was perfect. If people lived a long time when the genes were clean, we didn't have all the um, toxins in our systems and all that. We lived a long time. And what happened is a degradation from sin, we began not to be perfect anymore. So we used to know about God. So what happened? Mankind began to spread about. You look in the Bible and see what happened. They began to spread around the earth and set up their own places. And they knew about the truth. And they began to make their own religions based upon the premise of knowing the truth initially. Not only that. But in the, human, in the human heart and human mind, we are designed and wired for God. Um, psychologists, psychiatrists are telling us that, and the brain, and scientists are showing us that certain parts of the brain light up when we're spiritual. When we pray, certain parts of the mind light up. When people speak in their spiritual language, certain parts of the mind um, lights up. Why? Because we are made by God for God, and they're beginning to say, wow, when it gets spiritual, something else happens in them. Yeah, we're designed by God for God. So... Um, what happened is we started with the truth and we began to go away from the truth. And, for example, Buddhism. There's no God in Buddhism. It's a philosophy. And uh, they, they, don't, they don't believe in any final existence. They believe in countless rebirths called reincarnation. So uh, maybe one of you were a snail uh, on, on Waikiki Beach at one time. Maybe one of you was a... Imagine, if you will, if I thought, man, I was a, I was a tree in, in, uh, in Hawaii. Really? Yeah. How do you know? Well, I just have a love for Hawaii and I have a love for trees. So I think my past life, I was a tree. And well, I could say to that person, well, I think I was a dog in Hawaii. 
No, I'm not going to go any further than that. So, um, but people believe this. They believe that you're reincarnated. But the question is, even if a reincarnation was true, who determines when the cycle stops? So that's one. Another one would be Hinduism. And some of the most wonderful people I know are, are Indian and Hindus. They're just lovely people. And they believe in an impersonal God, and they approach through deities, statues, and they have millions of gods. And they believe, similar to Buddhism, but different, they believe there's this karma thing going on, and what you want to do is, if you, if, you, if you continue to evolve, you can eventually get to a point where your existence becomes one with God. You go through a process. And then there's something else you might have heard of called New Age. New Age is a Western version of Hinduism. It takes out all the things that they don't like in the Western culture. And basically, you become your own God and do what you want to do. And basically, if you want to understand Hinduism, I'm sorry, um, New Ageism, just watch Star Wars. It's the Force. Luke, trust the Force. You know, you, you, you think that. You know, I feel a disturbance in the Force. And so when we die, we become part of the energy that, that you know, gives the, the energy of the trees and the sun and the universe. We become a collective blob of energy. And so that's the, that's the essence of it. And some of them believe in reincarnation, some of them don't. Now, I know I'm being very simplistic about this, but it, it is, I'll give you the basic of it. And, uh, and then Buddhism and Hinduism do not offer forgiveness. They only have is karma. Then we have the Muslim faith. Now, the Muslim faith, they believe in one God called Allah. And by the way, Muhammad uh, was a contemporary. He, he, was, he came after Judaism, came after Christ. And what he basically did, he took Judaism, he took Christianity, he said, hey, I'm the final prophet. And then his contemporaries after him that succeeded him made a religion. And now I don't have time to get into all the different sects of, of, of Islam, but they basically believe that the word of Islam means submit. Now there's some people in our congregation here this morning, such as Darius and, and Marguerite, who know a lot about Islam because they lived in Iran, and they will tell you, make no mistake, it is a repressive religion. We know firsthand we're refugees in the United States, and they were protesting the Iran nuclear deal. I know I'm not going to get political. I'm just telling you their perspective. They were in, in New Haven saying, this is a bad deal. You cannot trust the government. I just left. Okay? And so that's what they, so they understand Islam. Now, Darius, I hope, I hope he doesn't mind since we've already shared his testimony. <laughs> Darius is like, nothing you can do about it now, unless you come up here and choke me. Uh, but they, you know, they grew up in a country where Islam, you have to submit, you have to believe, and you have to do, 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 do. You got to do this, this, and the other. And then maybe, the five pillars, maybe God will accept you if you do these things. Okay, there's different parts of it. There's liberal ones, there's conservative ones, but bottom line, it's, it's about Allah. You have to submit to Allah, and you don't really know if you're ever saved. You hope you are, and, and so I, I know it's a bit like it, but the problem is all of these people never rose again from the dead. There's only one person that did that. Every other religion in the world, you have to do. D-O. And in Christianity, it's D-O-N-E. Nothing else. It's done. Christ did it for us. And that's the vast difference. But let me illustrate a point. Imagine, if you will, if I was in the middle of Yellowstone National Park or in the middle of, actually, put myself in Alaska. I'm in the middle of a, of a forest, and it's getting cold, and I'm trying to find my way out of there. I don't know what to do, and I was told, you need to find a ranger to help you. So I'm there, I'm starving, I'm really worried about it. If I don't find my way out of this place, I'm going to die. And so I see a fork in the road, and I see, and the silhouettes in the distance, I see two ranger suits. I'm like, oh, cool. And I go there, and I begin to, I see a, a live ranger. I said, I know the way. I'll show you. I am, and then another person, and then, who's that? Well, that's a dead ranger. Now, why would I want to follow a dead forest ranger who died? I wouldn't, right? I'm going to follow the one that's alive. Well, Jesus died and rose again from the dead. Well, how do you know that for sure? I can't prove it for sure, but I can tell you over 500 people saw him, eyewitness accounts, and, and Jesus did say he was God. He was not just a great moral teacher. I'm going to just quote briefly. I quote this a lot. C.S. Lewis says a brilliant things. He says, Jesus never said he was a great moral teacher. Jesus is either a liar. Okay, he's a liar, a swindler. He's a lunatic by saying, thinks he's God, like someone in maybe in a hospital someplace, or he is the Lord. Jesus never gave us the option that he would just be a great moral teacher because a great moral teacher would not say the things that Jesus said. No great moral teacher would say, I'm God. And Jesus was put on the cross because he said he was God, not because he said he knew God. He says, I am the way. So what happened to Jesus? He rose again from the dead. We believe that. And he appeared to over 500 people. 
And it's an amazing thing. And so Jesus began to share. He, what he did for us is this. He paid the price for all of our sins. He paid a debt we could not pay. This is what we believe in Christianity. Other religions don't believe that. So when someone says it doesn't matter what you believe, it does matter what you believe because these other religions are not the same as Christianity. Yes, they have some good things in it, helping the poor. Yeah, remember, they all started from the, the, the good source initially, and then they went on their own and they developed their own religions. Now, uh, wrong, the wrong, taking the wrong path is a, is a serious thing. And so we're going to ask... How do we know about Jesus? I'm going to just briefly mention a few things. I'm going to talk about uh, what happens to those who don't know about Christ. You'd like to maybe know that? What happens to those who don't know about Christ? Are they going to go to hell? Well, we'll talk about that in a few moments. But, you know, the ministry of Jesus was amazing. Uh, his teaching was incredible. He rose again from the dead. His resurrection, he opened blind eyes. Um, his message was amazing. And, but we believe, well, Jesus is a nice guy. He would never send anyone to hell. God's a loving God. And I think the reason why they talk about hell is so they can control people. If I put fear in people, I can control the serfs. You know, uh, religion is the opium of the masses, as a communist leader one time said. So, well, how do we know this? Well, the Bible is very, very clear about it. It says he's the only way, the only truth, and the life. It says in Acts 17.30, this is Peter speaking, I mean, this is the, the apostle speaking. God overlooked, this is Apostle Paul actually, God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times. But now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. So God overlooked the ignorance of the past. Well, let me give you an example of what we're talking about. All of us are made in God's image. All of us have a God nature in us. We have something in us that connects to God that is broken. There's a broken conduit, there's a broken way to get to God. It's called sin, broke that bridge. And because that bridge was broken, God had to get, make us a bridge through the person and the work of Jesus Christ, through what he did. He paid the price we could not do, okay? Not pay. Now, Romans 1, 16 says the following. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. For I'm not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone, don't you love that, everyone, who believes, the Jew first and the Gentile. Those that are non-Jews are called Gentiles. This good news tells us God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As scripture says, it was through faith that righteousness person has life. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people, listen to this, who suppress the truth in their wickedness. Remember I mentioned before, I don't, want to hear, I don't want you to tell me how to live my life, so I'm going I'm to just do what I want to do, all right? Um, and verse 19, they know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God has made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. Listen, when you look at the sky at night, if you're in a country evening and all the lights are out, you look in the sky, there's no clouds, there's no moon, look at all the stars, and you're like, wow. Wow, there's got to be a God. Why? Why? All around the world, wherever you go, people are trying to find God. Why? Because we're made by God for God. And so what happens is we want to connect to God. And we try all these various ways. And so there's a God nature in us. We want to know God. All right, so the Bible says this. The Apostle Paul speaking here. Verse 21. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give thin thanks and began to think up foolish ideas what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Listen, when you start living in a path of deception, you go on a snowball thing and you get further and further away from the truth. Now, does God will send someone to hell that is in Africa, in a pygmy tribe someplace. And, you know, they're, they're in there worshiping the, the God of the tree. They have no idea. They never come to contact with the Bible. Is God going to send them to hell? What kind of God would do that? Listen, I, I can't answer that question, but what I can say is this. They're going to have to go through Jesus Christ because he's the only way, he's the only truth, and he's the only life. Well, what does the Bible say about that? It says that everyone has in them a God consciousness that there's a God. And how they respond to that knowledge determines what happens to them. Now, you would say, and I'm going to continue to read. Just bear with me here. I'm not a universalist. Maybe said, no, I'm not a universalist. Don't worry, I'm not. But let me just finish off here. Uh, in verse 21, we talked about that. In verse 22, claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols 
who look like mere people, birds, and reptiles. And then later on, look at Romans chapter two. I want you to see these scriptures, it's important. Romans chapter two, verse 14, says this. Even Gentiles, Apostle Paul speaking, who do not have God's written law, show that they know his law when they instinctively obey, even without hearing it. They demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts. All around the world, there's universal things. You don't kill people. You don't lie. You don't cheat. You don't steal. It's not seen as something good. Why? Because God's implant is implanted in them a God nature. And verse 16, of verse 15, they demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts for their own conscience and thoughts either accuse them or tell them they're doing right. And this message I proclaim that the day is coming when God through Jesus Christ will judge everyone's secret life. How would you like God to come right here right now? How would you like if I had the ability to, to plug a cord, in, a USB into your, uh, into your mouth <laughs> and I was able to download your thoughts and I was able to show on the screen what happened this past week? How many of you have come to church? Okay, all of us, the Bible says all has sinned, all has fallen short of God's standards. And so it says in Romans 4.15, for the law brings punishment on those who try to obey it. Listen to this. The only way to avoid breaking the law is to have no law to break. And so Jesus later on says in John 15.22, talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, says this, they would not be guilty if I had not come and spoken to them, but now they have no excuse for their sin. So, let me just help us to understand what we're talking about here, okay? God will judge us based on how we respond to the truth that we know. Okay, if that be the case, then why should we send missionaries? Why don't we just leave those people alone? Right? Let's just, let's just lock the doors, say we got the truth, and not worry about it, and God will take care of it. No, God does not give us that option. He says, go into all the earth, teaching and proclaiming who I am. How will they know unless someone comes and brings it? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news? Problem is, you and I, on our own devices, will destroy ourselves. And so we need to know the truth. Well, how are people going to find the truth? It doesn't seem fair. What about someone in a mosque and they're sitting there in Saudi Arabia and they're, and they're facing Mecca. They're in a mosque and they're going over three times a day. They're praying. What's going to happen to them? Well, you know what's amazing? There's a the people who are having encounters with Jesus. We have a missionary, um, Don Butera, who's in Indonesia and he says, he's, he hears us uh, all the time. Someone comes up, I was in a mosque and I was praying and I saw a vision of Jesus. I talked to one person in Indonesia. I went on a mission trip there a number of years ago, and I talked to the gentleman. He said, yeah, we, we went to this village in the middle of nowhere, one of these small little islands in Indonesia, and the, uh, the clan leader came up to him and said, you're the person we saw in a dream two years ago. You, were, you had the white beard and the white outfit. They said that these men were going to come and show us who God was, and the whole village gave their life to Jesus. We have Darius right over here. He had a visitation with Jesus in his bedroom. He saw a vision of Jesus. He was awake. And he says, are you really it? And Jesus showed himself to him. Now what's amazing is this. And, and Darius, he's a, he's, a, he's a straight, he's a good guy. He's a smart guy. He's a normal guy. He's not, you know, making things up. He really saw it happen. And what's so amazing about all this is that my friend Don Portera, the missionary, gets upset. It blows me away. He gets upset. He says, I can't believe it. He said, what's the matter? Can you believe that Jesus has to show up in a mosque to tell people about himself? That's terrible. I'm like, that's awesome. Well, what are you talking about? He says, we should be doing that. That's our job, not his. We're not doing our job, so Jesus himself has to come. And I was like, what? And, and, and you know, he's got a point there. We're supposed to proclaim the truth. Why? Because the truth will set people free. People are hurting themselves and each other because you're designed by God for God, and until you give your life to God, you're going to hurt yourself and each other. You hear me say that a lot, don't you? Yeah, because it's true. And so that's why Jesus has come, to give us life and life more abundantly. He wants us to have life. I want to read the most famous scripture verse in the New Testament. It's called Tim Tebow 316. Oh, John 316. He's on the Eagles. I hope he gets free. Okay, well, anyhow, he's the third string. We're still praying for him. All right. 
John 3, 16, and we all know the scripture verse, but I want to read it to you because it really shows God's heart. Listen, if God wanted to damn us right now, none of us would be in this room. He'd just close shop and say, that's it. The reason you're alive because there's a potential for you to know God, a potential to find your life purpose, a potential to be what God has created you to be. And we're here to help others know what God has done because there is an enemy out there that wants to kill, that wants to destroy, that wants to deceive you and get you into slavery so you'll miss out what God has for you. So, what does the Bible have to say? Well, I'm going to read something you've probably heard a million times, but listen to this. I'm going to put it beyond 316. For God so loved the world, and the word agape means unconditional love, loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, we all know that one. Verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn it. He does not want to condemn people. That's not his job at this point, condemn the world, but that through him they might be saved. There's no reason to have a savior if there's nothing to save people from. He didn't just come, to, he's not some late night motivational speaker to help you get the pay raise and be a better parent by ordering this DVD set for 1995. If you act now, you get a special highlighting pen. Now that's not the reason he came. He came because there is an end coming where you and I will be judged in how we live our lives. And God wants to give us a chance. And the Bible says right here in 316, 317, uh, it would not condemn the world, but the world would be saved through him. Now listen to verse 18. He who believes in him or accepts him is not condemned. But he or she who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Listen to this. Same as Romans chapter 1. That the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Don't tell me about God. I want to do it my way. And I think everyone in this room know what I'm talking about because you've been in that situation in the past. I want to do this. I don't care what he'll say. And at first, it's hard. Ah, oh, that hurt. I shouldn't have done that. After a while, I don't care anymore. And that's a scary thing. That's a scary place to be. Verse 20, for everyone who practices evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. So it's an amazing thing that we're just right here, isn't it? The truth is that Jesus does exist. He came to the earth to pay for our, our sins. It's real, folks. No other religion does that. Not only that, he's done countless miracles. My father sitting right here had a visitation with Jesus when he was 16 years old. God told my father, through Jesus, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. My dad's like, what is the Lamb's Book of Life? He had no idea what it was. And he found out it's in the book of Revelation. Incidentally, uh, his testimony saved me from dropping my faith. I knew my dad wasn't a liar. And I was struggling. And that was the one thread that held me. And some of you are questioning, God is okay. God gave you a mind. If you're questioning to know Christ, that's fantastic. If you're, if you're finding objections so you can make an excuse and a loophole to do your own thing, you're in dangerous territory. Bottom line is this. God will judge us from what you know and how you respond to the truth. The scary thing is, imagine yourself left to your own devices. It's a scary thing. That's why we had to spread the gospel throughout the earth. And I want to conclude, I ask the worship team to make their way up. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to God except through me. Whether you're in a tribe and some African continent, some country in Kenya or something like that, or well, you're right here, in the, right now in this room, a Cornerstone Church, 1146 Waterbury Road. All of us are going to have to face God one day, and God's going to say, why should I? Because of what Christ has done. The good news is, you and I can never have enough, but Christ did it for us. The Bible says in Romans 1.16, I, for I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and the Gentile. It says in John 1.12, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave them the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, 
but a birth that comes from God. And finally, the last verse I want to read to you is this. Romans 3.22. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Listen, there's probably about three people, types of people here this morning, maybe four people, types of people. Well, some of you, yeah, I got all this already. I'm a believer, I believe in Jesus, and that's great. Well, listen, it's good that we remind ourselves of these things because people come up to you all the time and say, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. You can say, no, it's not really true. You say it in a loving way and help them through the process if they want to hear you. You know, you want to tell people the truth. Some of you maybe are here and say, you know, I want to believe, but I got some questions. I really do. I got some questions. I like all this stuff, but I, I just don't know if it's really real. I mean, I like the tooth fairy, but I'm not quite sure he really exists. And I'm not quite sure Jesus is who he says he is. And, but I like to know. I really want to know. And if that's you today, that's okay. God's all right with you asking questions. Because you really want to know. And, I, and I, we'd be happy to meet with you and talk to you. I'm serious. I'll make it a point. I'd be happy to talk to you and work some of these things, and we can work together on this. And I'm not afraid of that, because I believe the truth. My dad took six months with a Jewish man he told my father, a good, good friend of the family, his name Jay Bergman, he said, he says, if you can prove Christ to me in the Old Testament without opening the New Testament, I'll believe. My dad took six months with him. The man became a believer in Jesus Christ without opening the New Testament. The man became a pastor. He's a dear, wonderful man of God today. We're not afraid of questions because God's truth. I'm not afraid of truth. But if you want to know him, you really want to know him, it comes to a point in place where you have to say, I I want to give my life to him. So there's some people here that are believers. Some of you are saying, I really want to know, uh, and I got questions. I want to make an informed decision. That's okay. God's all right with that. And some of you are saying, you know what? I don't care. I think it's a bunch of nonsense. And I pray that you would hear what we said today and that you would consider it because it is the truth. And so that's our prayer today. So Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for this opportunity to examine the scriptures a little bit, Lord, to see what you say. We thank you that you're a fair and just God. But Lord, we understand the reason why you came, Jesus, was to save us from an eternal existence without you called hell. Where there's no hope, there's no love, there's no, there's no comfort. And Father, we recognize that you've come to save us. And we thank you for that, Jesus. I'm going to ask you some of you a question today. If, you know, you might have heard this before, but if you were to die today, do you absolutely positively know you'd be with Christ in heaven? If you don't know that for sure, today can be your day. Maybe you know about God. Maybe you've been to church. Maybe you can quote Bible verses. It's not about knowing about God. It's about giving your life to Him. I can know all I want about a, a, a cruise ship. I'm going to take a cruise ship to the Bahamas, whatever. I can say, oh, I believe in a cruise ship. I believe in it. I, I, I know the captain. I talk to the captain, and I have the blueprints. But until you pay the ticket price, until you board the ship with that paid price, you can't do it. The beautiful thing is that Jesus paid the price for us. But we have to give it to him and get on and trust him. Maybe some of you have never done that. And I'm going to ask you to pray right now. If you want to do that today, today can be a new day for you. I'm going to pray after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you are the Son of God. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, both known and unknown. And I choose from this day forward with your help to follow you. I make you the boss, the father, and director of my life today. I no longer call the shots. I now submit my life to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. With every head bow, if you prayed that prayer today, I see a quick show of hands. Say, Pastor, that was me. I prayed it for the first time or recommitted my life. Anyone this morning? Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I want to ask you to guys come up afterwards. We'll pray with you. Now I want to pray for the rest of you. I want to pray for some of you that are struggling. You want to know God because I've been where you are. I understand. Lord Jesus, I just pray for those that are struggling and trying to figure you out and are you really real? Lord, I thank you. You have a promise. If you will search for me with all your heart, you will find me. God, I pray you'd make yourself real to those that are searching, whether they're watching on the internet or they're here at live. Father, we're asking that you to reveal yourself to them in a special way that they would know that you are God and that you love them. And Father, for the rest of us, we ask that we would grow in love for you, Lord. Give us a passion 
to share our faith with those who don't know, Lord. Give us the compassion and love of Christ that we would love people as you love them, Father. That we would lay, a, uh, lay aside condemnation and we'd embrace love and say, there is a better way. God loves you. Father, I pray that we would be bold for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's all stand if we could. I'm going to ask the uh, prayer team to make their way up. If you need prayer for anything at all, prayer for your family, a job, a situation, sometimes you need someone to stand with you and say, will you pray with me? These folks will pray with you. If you prayed that prayer today, give your life to Christ, we want to help you out and give you some steps to help you in your new journey. So Esteban, would you please have us a closing song and then we'll dismiss everyone. Oh, holy, holy are you Lord God Almighty God bless you today. May his grace shine upon you. May his love propel you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless. If you want prayer, please come forward. Of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear.